Welcome back to a new episode of The AJ Show. And at the beginning of the year when I did my uh, direct, I talked about reviewing Sonic Frontiers. And today we're embarking on some new frontiers. We're finally talking about it. We are talking about the hit Sonic game. That's right, it's a hit. It's a hit now. Sonic Frontiers. They finally did it. Sega finally did it. They made a good Sonic game. It took them forever to do it, but they finally made a good 3D Sonic game. And we're going to talk about it right here on The AJ Show. As always, get yourself a uh, beverage olive, sit back and relax, and let's embark on some new frontiers. Back in the early 90s, everybody was talking about Mario, but also speeding along the way is the blue blur himself, Sonic the Hedgehog, and people were talking about Sonic the Hedgehog in school. And it was just an epic time of the console wars between Sega and Nintendo, and it was just the epic battle. Who was the better mascot? Was it Mario? Was it Sonic the Hedgehog? Well, I was more of a Sonic fan than Mario. I do enjoy my Mario games, and I still consider Super Mario World as my personal top favorite in the Mario series. Maybe we should talk about Mario sometime on the AJ Show. We'll do that sometime down the road. But we're here to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog today, and it's Sonic Frontiers, the latest epic 3D game from Sonic the Hedgehog. But it's been some time, some time since the release of Mania, it forces that we finally got a new trailer for a new upcoming Sonic game in 2021, displaying a brand new open world adventure. So we thought it was open world. It's more like open zone adventure. That's how they describe it in the magazines. If you read the articles and such, yeah, there's some magazines out there. Walmart has free magazines of gaming. Go pick one up. It's free. Yeah, this magazine right here, Game Center. You know, Walmart Game Center. They give these out for free. Did you realize that? They're free. You get free content right here. It talks about all about Sonic Mania. And I picked, you know, this was given to me. And flipping through, it's like, all right, I'm going to pre-order. This is what made me pre-order Sonic Frontiers. I was going to give, I mean, not that I wasn't going to give Sonic Frontiers an opportunity. Because I'm a Sonic fan. I'm an avid, long-time Sonic fan who's been burnt after time, after time, after time with mediocre to crappy Sonic games. The best generation was the Genesis era. I mean, Adventures 1 and 2 was good. And there was a couple other sporadic ones that were okay. But a lot of it was just a pile of steaming pile of garbage. So what, what's new? What's different? What's the story of Sonic Frontiers? So Dr. Eggman travels to an abandoned Starfall Islands to steal the technology secrets created by the ancient creatures related to chaos. That's right. There's going to be several tie-ins trying to make everything continuity. I wish they just left Sonic Forces out of this. I really do. When he uploads his artificial intelligent unit Sage into a portal, several robotic defenses units are summoned. Detecting a threat signature, Sage seizes, hijacks a portal, and initiates a protocol protection, dragging Eggman into an artificial dimension called cyberspace. Leading Sonic, Tails, and Amy to investigate the activity that has drawn the Chaos Emeralds to these islands. But their plane is sucked into a wormhole to cyberspace and Sonic escapes to the islands in the real world where a disembodied voice tasks him to finding the Emeralds and destroying the island's robotic titans to remove the boundary between the real and digital worlds. Believing this will save his friends, including Knuckles, all right, who has been captured by Sage after exploring the ruins above Angel Island and being transported to Starfall's Islands. Sonic releases their digital forms from the cages created by Sage, who works to free Eggman from cyberspace. Destroying the cages causes Sonic's body to become increasingly corrupted. Sage cautions Sonic to leave, influencing the island's mechanical Guardians and Titans to attack him, but grows to sympathize with him while observing his interactions with his friends 
and forms a mutual bond with Eggman. And Sonic and his friends learn about the history of the ancients who were revealed to be extraterrestrial race whose planet was destroyed by... Yeah, the final boss you encounter is named The End. The End! Yeah! Somebody gave up on creativity right there. The End! The End is an all-powerful entity. The ancients used the Chaos Emeralds to escape and were drawn to the Master Emerald on Earth and settled on the Starfall Islands. But The End followed and started to wipe out their new civilization. The ancients built the Titans to seal The End within cyberspace with their essence remaining within their accessories, the Coco, which become inert once Sonic and his friends help them fulfill their final desires in life. That's pretty sad. There are some sad moments when it comes to the story of Sonic Frontiers that you'll encounter. I mean, a lot of the flashback, there's a lot of character building in this game. It's just incredible in some of these parts. After destroying the three Titans and disabling the towers that maintain the boundary, Sonic succumbs to his corruption and is trapped between dimensions. Released with Sonic's friends and Eggman, the entity guiding Sonic reveals itself to be THE END, which attacks Earth using the last Titan Supreme. Sonic's friends purge the corruption from Sonic by sacrificing the physical forms, while Sage persuades Eggman to help Sonic collect the scattered Chaos Emerald. Super Sonic confronts the end and forces it to abandon Supreme. Sage then takes control of the Titan and pursues the end's true form into the Earth's orbit alongside Sonic, where she sacrifices herself to destroy it. Sonic's friends are restored and leave the islands with him, while Eggman revives Sage using the island's technology. Sonic Frontiers is what's classified as an open zone action platformer. Not open world. Let's make that clear. It's open zone. Even though people compared it to Breath of the Wild, it's not the same. It is really not the same. It is nice to just be able to run around in the open zones. They got like all these railings and platforms and such that you can travel through, stuff to collect, enemies to fight throughout the land. But then you end up getting into these uh, portals that take you into cyberspace to get key vaults. And the key the key vaults basically unlocks the vaults where the Chaos Emeralds are stored away. For each section of the island, which there are about five total that you're going to go through, four of them, you're basically collecting the Chaos Emeralds. And what I mean by that is, once you, you go through one island, open zone, you collect all seven Chaos Emeralds, you battle that Titan, and then you go to the next island at Supersonic, but you lose your emeralds. You have to go back and recollect them all over again. That threw me off really badly. It really did because usually in the Sonic game, when you collect the Chaos Emeralds, you get to keep them. No, they just disperse. Get locked in vaults again. Got to do the same crap over, you know, but in a different land with different enemies. It's just crazy, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And the enemies come in different varieties large massive enemies you have to figure out the strategy on how to take them down you get little ones there are just so many variations of enemies to take down in these open zone areas and the cyberspace levels are basically just rehash sonic zones like green hill chemical plant sky sanctuary you name it you've done it all right you've been there before how many times are we going to see green hill zone how many times are we going to see chemical plant zone i'm sick of it there's one portal in particular where you end up into a fishing pond and lo and behold, ladies and gentlemen, Big the Cat. Big the Cat. Oh, don't get me started with Big the Cat. Actually, Big the Cat in this game, we became best friends. Seriously. A fishing game and a Sonic game. Now, they had fishing games in the Legend of Zelda series where you could go fish. Like in Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time. But fishing in a Sonic game? I actually enjoyed this part. There's people out there that are like, man, I don't like this part. But, there, but for me, I enjoyed it. The 
fishing vibes soundtrack to this section. It's just amazing. I downloaded it on my phone and I'll listen to fishing vibes while driving on the road. And I'm like, man, it's just so calming and peaceful. And it is like the best soundtrack ever for a Sonic game. I mean, the soundtrack overall is pretty decent, especially when you get the, you know, the tight boss music. Each of them had different lyrical rocking soundtracks, you know, and it's fantastic across the board. I downloaded all of those for sure. I definitely did. A fishing vibes. Aw, oh, son, come on! What a great moment to relax with fishing vibes in Big the Cat. Oh, Big the Cat, you redeemed yourself, my friend. And it's really a, really a good time. I don't know what big is feeding this fish or what fishing ponds but there are some ginormous fish and there's some questionable aquatic creatures in this thing and there's a lot of odds in garbage that's in this pond i i don't know but hey you're in a cyberspace fishing pond with big the cat how did they get stuck in this mess how did they get here in the first place that's a big mystery I want to know. Big's Fishing Pond is definitely a must place to visit. If you're struggling with some of these other portals and get keys and gears and such, Big's Fishing Pond's got you covered, ladies and gentlemen. You just got to go find the fishing coins because apparently it costs money to fish. Big, what's going on here? Oh, hey, Sonic. You come here to fish too? Big, what are you doing here? How did you get here? What even is here? I don't know. I was looking for fishing spots and wound up here. So now I'm fishing. The character development in this game is just simply amazing. The stories the, that's being told, of course, it is Ian Flynn who writes the Sonic comics right now with IDW. He's the writer, the story writer for this game. And it's just a fantastic story overall. And they really, really try hard to make all the games continuity for some reason. I don't know why. I really don't. Because there's some games you could do without. But it is what it is. Sonic is just sprackly all over the place for all these years. And what really gets character developed is the relationship between Sage, the AI that Dr. Eggman created. They basically create this father-daughter bond. And especially at the end of the scene where you see Dr. Eggman just being torn inside, you know, because he knows what has to be done. And he reluctantly joins up with Sonic and tells Sage to go fulfill her mission. But he chokes up. And then at the end, when Sage sacrifices herself, Dr. Eggman is just left sad. Eggman is the one that gets such character development that you start to sympathize for the maniac tyrant known as Dr. Eggman. All we did was chase it out of its shell. It's retreating into space to regain its true form. Even Supersonic won't be able to stop it. I know what I must do. I must leave you. I understand. Go. Fulfill your function. Fields. It really did. Dr. Eggman's story in this one, he takes a backseat as the villain in this one. He's not really the villain. He attempts to be, but he's not the villain in this game. It's the end. The end is the villain. And Sonic's friends gets development throughout this game too. I mean, there's a, the encounters. Like there's a moment where Tails feels like he's been such a burden to Sonic after all these years and isn't as good as him to take care of himself on his own. Even referencing some previous game like Sonic Forces where basically Tails has a mental breakdown at one point. Just weird. But, you know, but Sonic reminds Tails on how good he really is and that he isn't a burden. And then the, you know, the the bromance between Knuckles and Sonic is really laid in thick. Amy is not this, you know, love-struck pink hedgehog anymore. She just wants to share her love with the world, you know? Like... For, like helping people and, and such. So 
Amy really took a big, huge uh, development as well through this game. The battle mechanics in this game is button combos, button mashing, whatever you want to call it. It's good. It's very good. There's a lot of different styles of combat that you could do. A lot of learning. There's a learning curve to some of this stuff when it comes to the combinations. But really, all I do is just really mash the buttons. It gets the job done, really, with some of these battles. But by far, this is one of the best 3D Sonic games that Sega has finally did. They have finally did it. They finally made a great 3D Sonic game. And, you know, the possibilities is endless now. This has really set the pace and tone for the future of Sonic games. And I'm really excited to see where this is going to take us in the future with Sonic the Hedgehog. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Y'all stay safe out there and take care.